This week in the world of Linux gaming, we've seen a ton of boomer shooter news. We'll review all the details. Plus, we'll take a look at the new Nexus Mod app and see what they've got in store for their cross-platform future. And what neat new features has Valve added to the latest Steam Deck beta? All of this and more today. Let's get right into the news. So a few months ago, Night Dive's Star Wars Dark Forces remaster released. It was a good upgrade and it presented the open source project called the Force Engine with an opportunity to support the HD assets in their engine. But what is the Force Engine? Well, you might have put two and two together. The Force Engine is an open source rebuild of Star Wars Dark Forces, the original version of the game, uh, its engine, and it uses the original assets from the game to play. Well, this week, uh, version 1.10.00 was released and it features a whole host of changes. And this includes supporting HD assets, including textures, sprites, and the HUD with cutscenes and briefings coming in the future. They've also added support for a bunch of options and overrides to facilitate the new assets, and they've added a new asset browser as well. Hopefully this new update will hit Luxterpeta soon. And if Luxterpeta is a foreign word to you, uh, it's an open source Steam Play compatibility tool like Proton that allows you to launch Steam games using free and open source community-made engines. Games like Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 with OpenRCT2, and then there's games like the classic Tomb Raiders and more. They all have FOSS engines that are available, and Dark Forces is among them. That's what the Force engine is. I've made a video about Luxterpeta a while ago, and it's still relevant, so you can check it out up here with the link. And speaking of Luxterpeta, we got another thing to mention. A few weeks ago, uh, during a news video, I covered the release of Marathon on Steam. Now, if you haven't heard of Marathon, you're missing out. It's one of Bungie's earliest and best games, in my opinion. It gives me Doom vibes while still having a style all its own. So when it was released on Steam for free, mind you, a little while ago, I was elated. I remember playing this game with my friend Carl on his dad's Mac in the mid-90s and being blown away by the atmosphere and the creativity. It's just great to see a classic like this on Steam. But now you can get the sequel to Marathon, on Steam, it's called Classic Marathon 2, and once again, it's completely free. It also has a, a DLC pack for it called XBLA Graphics Pack, which stands for Xbox Live Arcade Graphics Pack. Now, this includes upgraded textures and such, and while there isn't an explicit Linux release here for the game, you can use Luxterpeta to play the game. It's pretty exciting stuff. Now, have you tried Marathon or Marathon 2, or have you given Luxterpeta a spin? Sound off in the comments below. I'd love to hear how everybody's using uh, these tools that are available from the community. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. You can also subscribe to stay up to date with all the fun stuff that we're doing here on the channel. Also, don't miss out on subscribe2.me. It's my PeerTube instance where I host these videos at least a day early. You can head over there, you can subscribe to the channel using your existing Mastodon or PeerTube account, and you can even use RSS. So Valve just added a new batch of refurbished Steam Decks for sale. Uh, you can find a link to them below. If you're looking to get into the Steam Deck game, or you're looking to pick up a Steam Deck for a child or a family member at a lower cost, then the refurbished program might be exactly what you're looking for. According to the refurbished page, quote, each certified refurbished Steam Deck has been thoroughly tested to the same high standards as our retail units. Every device goes through a complete factory reset, software upgrade, and an extensive examination involving over 100 tests at one of Valve's facilities. Among the tests are all controller inputs, the audio system, the screen, and internals. Battery health is also assessed to ensure proper functionality and longevity. All refurbished units meet or even exceed the performance standards of new retail units. Although they may have minor cosmetic blemishes, they provide a reliable, high-quality gaming experience at a lower cost. Each refurbished unit has the same one-year warranty as the new units do. They include a refurbished power supply and a carrying case. Now look, the 512GB model is just $359. The 256 model comes in at a cool $319, and you can get a refurbished 64GB Steam Deck for just $279. I mean, that's an absolute steal, guys. And if you pick up one of these refurbished models, you're probably going to want an SD card, or even maybe an SSD upgrade. You can use my affiliate links below to get one for yourself, or even both of them. 
I highly recommend this one terabyte SanDisk SD card. It's what I consider to be the best SD card for the Steam Deck right now. It's what I use in my deck personally as well. But if you're looking for a more permanent upgrade, there's also the Sabrent Rocket 2230 NVMe. These are both devices that I have personally tested with my deck. I, I mean, this one terabyte drive is still installed in my uh, personal Steam Deck. Both of these come highly recommended and there are affiliate links below. Now, I'm not sure how I missed this one, but apparently Nexus Mods is working on a new cross-platform and open source modding app, and it should considerably ameliorate the terrible state of mod management on Linux. And according to their GitHub, quote, the Nexus Mod app is a mod installer, creator, and manager for your popular games. It, quote, is easy to use, runs on your standard Windows PC and Linux alike, don't waste time troubleshooting, play your games, fill those knees with arrows, and most importantly, have fun. Now this is super exciting since, as I said, manually managing mods for every game on your Linux system can be a bit tedious and not to mention cumbersome, especially when you consider the Steam Deck's limited inputs. With all that in mind, this new release of the Nexus Mods app provides fixes for Stardew Valley and introduces extremely experimental support for Cyberpunk 2077. As it stands right now, the support for games with this new application is limited, but support will continue to grow. Now, I haven't tried the new Nexus Mods app, um, but one thing I would like to see is support for controller input, uh, because having a controller-driven interface as well as a mouse and keyboard-driven interface is kind of a big deal uh, in today's day and age where handheld gaming and couch gaming are so important to the PC. The latest Steam Deck beta includes some exciting new features that we need to talk about. Released on July 16th, this beta update's release notes are extensive, so we're gonna go over the highlights here. Uh, under the general category, there are improvements to keyboard event tracking and audio latency in updated SDL builds, and they've improved uh, client startup performance along with various other fixes. For game recording, which is the biggest focus for Steam right now, it seems, they've improved thumbnail smoothness when mouse tracking across different highlights and regions on the timeline. They've added a max frame rate setting, which currently supports 30 or 60 FPS, along with many fixes. In desktop mode, they fixed control F not focusing search box in the library. For remote play, they simplified encoding options to a hardware encoding enable checkbox. And for Steam input, they fixed the SI API get motion data not returning any information on every controller, but only the first one plugged in. Now this was an incremental update for the Steam Deck beta, but it was one that had some valuable improvements, so I'm glad to see it. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the stories that we talked about in today's video. Leave me a comment and let me know. Make sure you check out my video on Lux Trapetta, and if you believe in the work that I'm doing here, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. That's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.